Hey, friendly neighborhood immunologist here, and today's video is about vitamin D, specifically vitamin D3 and the immune system. This might surprise you, but getting the right amount of vitamin D activates part of your immune system and then shuts down the other part. So I'm going to explain to you where vitamin D boosts and where vitamin D suppresses. So let's get started. All right, so vitamin D is otherwise known as 1,2,5-dihydroxy vitamin D. So why is it called that? The dihydroxy tells you that there's two things, two hydroxyl groups, which is an O for oxygen and an H for hydrogen. And the 125 tells you where the hydroxyl groups are located at the first and 25th molecule of vitamin D. All right, so we're gonna show you the classic mechanism here first on how vitamin D improves calcium absorption. That's why I've drawn you the intestines and bone. So here we go. Let's say that you eat a vitamin D pill or you perhaps drink some milk with vitamin D added. They also add it to orange juice now. So you're consuming vitamin D and calcium together. It's going into your intestines. It's being absorbed by your intestinal cells. It then passes into your bloodstream. Once in your bloodstream, it goes to your bones. And in your bones, it improves calcium absorption. So calcium, calcium absorption in your bones makes for stronger bones. Calcium is the reason you have such a strong structure. It gets incorporated into circles called osteons or crisscrosses called trabeculae. But either way, taking calcium by itself doesn't get absorbed as well as taking it together with vitamin D. All right, so that's the classic mechanism. Now let's switch gears to talking about the immune system because, well, that's my favorite thing to talk about. Here we have the macrophage. The macrophage is an innate immune cell. It lives typically from like 20 days to a couple of months, and it's really amazing at killing bacteria and viruses. So here in blue, we have the vitamin D receptor. And then um, in the blue diamonds, we have vitamin D, specifically vitamin D3. So the reason it's called vitamin D3, you actually take vitamin D and it's inactive. It's inactive when you consume it in beef or fish or, or beans. And then what happens is your kidneys and your liver convert it into the active form, which is vitamin D3. So vitamin D3, once it's been converted from your diet and or a supplement into vitamin D3, it can bind to the vitamin D receptor. If you're interested in reading papers about the vitamin D receptor, there are thousands on PubMed and they almost always just abbreviated VDR. They just like jump right in and do that. Uh, so here at the bottom, I'm just going to go ahead and write out the way that vitamin D3 um, is the active form of vitamin D. So on the bright side, you can get it just naturally from a healthy and varied diet. Uh, vitamin D is actually fascinating. It's not just a vitamin, it's also a hormone. And a hormone means it can travel all around your body, have wide effects, and pass right through the membrane of some of your cells and just interact internally. Uh, let's see. But yeah, I just think it's so cool that it's, it's a hormone too. All right. So then once vitamin D binds to the vitamin D receptor, it's going to boost and suppress a macrophage. And I know that's a little confusing, but I am going to help unpack that. So if you think about the way that immune cells fight, they usually fight through small molecules called cytokines. Now cytokines can either be inflammatory or anti-inflammatory. So traditionally, when an infection begins, all immune cells respond by making inflammation. So here we go. Vitamin D3 has bound to the blue vitamin D receptor. There are a series of changes that sort of do a relay race to the nucleus. The nucleus is where your DNA is housed and it's where genetic changes happen. So the top genetic change in an innate immune cell is typically NF-kappa B. NF-kappa B is a transcription factor. That's the name for a protein that once it enters the nucleus, it can make genetic changes. There are 
I don't know, there's, there's just hundreds of transcription factors and they all do different things. But NF kappa B is one of like the classic inflammatory transcription factors. It's pretty much the first thing within, you know, 10 to 30 minutes of having an infection, your native immune cells are activating NF kappa B. So the vitamin D receptor actually does the opposite and it shuts down NF kappa B. And that's right, that means that your macrophages are less likely to be producing inflammation. So it sounds a little scary on the, you know, on the front of it because you're thinking, okay, what if I had an infection and here I am taking vitamin D and it's like shutting down my classic inflammation pathway. I mean, that's what steroids do. Steroids shut down NF-kappa B. And if you take steroids for a long period of time, they can suppress the immune system and make you more prone to infection. But vitamin D is more complex than that. It's going to shut down inflammation through stopping NF-kappa B. Let's do that again. NF-kappa. It is the Greek letter kappa, so K-A-P-P-A, NF-kappa B. And as I mentioned, it's going to shut down inflammatory cytokines. And specifically, the inflammatory cytokines IL-1 beta, IL-6, and TNF-alpha. So why do you care? Uh, the IL stands for interleukin or between white blood cells. It's a way for immune cells to boost and activate each other uh, and even potentially call in more immune cells. So IL-1 beta and IL-6 are very good at activating and bringing in other immune cells. And TNF-alpha stands for tumor necrosis factor alpha. It's very good at destroying viruses, particularly viral or cancer infected cells. It was actually discovered by the fact that it, it destroyed tumors. So tumor necrosis factor, tumor death factor. All right. So with those three very important cytokines reduced, you might think, okay, if I had an autoimmune disease, I think taking vitamin D3 would be awesome or vitamin D and having it converted into vitamin D3 by your liver and kidney. That would perhaps be a good thing. But if I was in the middle of fighting off a bacteria or a virus, you know, I actually might want these inflammatory cytokines. So, you know, people aren't just taking vitamin D3 and getting sick. So then what's the flip side? What's the good part? So I will tell you, um, I also went off the page. Hold up. Oh, yes. I also want to mention COX-2. So COX-2 is a gene that makes um, lots of inflammation called nitric oxide. And nitric oxide is really good at destroying pathogens that make it inside of your cells. Okay, so no more spoilers. Here we go. What vitamin D also does, it's going to boost some stuff. It's going to boost some really primitive stuff in your body that's kind of fascinating and we don't research a lot. It's getting a little bit more active. So here we go. Vitamin D3 is actually going to boost some really cool primitive stuff in your body. These things are literally shared between birds, fish, reptiles. I mean, talking about like perhaps some of our earliest immune system. All right, so cathelicidin, LL37, and beta defensins. The closest thing, again, if you, if, you, if you really enjoy the immune system, if you've watched a lot of videos on it, you, some of these might be familiar. Probably beta defensins might be the most familiar. So they act like complement. You might be wondering, what the heck is complement? Complement is also thought to be an early evolutionary immune system that's not very specific. It doesn't have any memory, but it can punch holes in your enemies. So if you think of a bacteria or a virus as a water balloon, they are the pins of your immune system, or maybe even the scissors of your immune system. And they run around punching holes in your enemies, and then they basically just bleb out or bleed out <laughs> and die. So all cathelicidin, LL37, and beta defensin, they all happen to punch holes in bacteria and viruses. They can sort of get together in a ring and line up and make a hole. Ooh, okay, one other thing. 
So if you're really into the immune system, you might know about these things called major histocompatibility complexes, or my little orange H receptor here. Now, MHC class 2 is the way that macrophages talk to adaptive immune cells, long-lived immune cells called T cells. So it gets downregulated. I'm circling in red here what gets downregulated. There's less inflammation with vitamin D. There's also let less MHC class 2, which means macrophages are less likely to talk to T cells. And this actually can reduce autoimmune disease. Here we go. So I'm circling in green what gets boosted. The primitive stuff, cathelicidin, LL37, and beta defensins. In fact, uh, beta defensins might be the newest forms of antibiotics. Uh, researchers have discovered that beta defensins could potentially be given um, as a drug, as a pill, and will fight bacterial infections, ideally with less antibiotic resistance. Okay. So I looked up here and I realized I wrote bacteria off the screen, but this little squiggly over here is a bacteria. I'm going to go ahead and draw it in this red color, and then I'm going to show you how cathelicidin, LL37, and beta defensins work. And as I mentioned, they work like complement in that they're going to come along, they are going to sort of puncture the outside, they're going to puncture the membrane and form these holes. And it really is like taking a pin to a balloon. You know, one pin prick is not going to destroy the water balloon. Uh, but after you've, you know, look how many there are. If you have hundreds to thousands of these being produced by a macrophage, they're going to kill that bacteria. And T cells, these are your long lived adaptive immune cells that can literally remember one specific virus or one specific bacteria anywhere from a year to your entire lifetime. And the reasons that, you know, this varies is still a fascinating gray area of the immune system that people are actively working on. All right, so here's a T cell in blue. Here's your B cell in orange. I'm going to go ahead and color code the vitamin D receptors here in blue, just like they were on the macrophage. So if you recall, I told you that the macrophage actually has less vitamin D receptor than other immune cells. T cells and B cells actually have a considerable amount of vitamin D receptor. They're going to be very responsive to your vitamin D levels. And I'll tell you why that matters. <laughs> so T cells, when they get activated within the first eight hours, T cells start to upregulate the vitamin D receptor. And then by 48 hours, they have their peak levels of vitamin D because they actually want to be shut down. Your immune system specifically your adaptive immune system is so powerful that when it goes out of control, you can get autoimmune diseases. So your body has numerous, this is not the only way to dampen the adaptive immune system. It's not. But this is one of the natural ways that your body can tell T cells and B cells when the fight is over, the battle has been won, the bacteria and the virus have been slayed, like settle down. So um, if you take or eat vitamin D in your diet, like I mentioned, red meat, fish, beans, all the good stuff, it'll bind to the vitamin D receptor. It will also go to the nucleus of the T cells, of the B cells, and it's going to shut them down. It's going to stop them from dividing. And on top of stopping them from dividing, it's going to stop them from making certain products that would excite or boost them. Okay. So it's going to take me a minute to like sync this up with what I'm saying. So I'm going to go ahead and give you some additional information as I draw it out. So T cells will stop dividing, number one. Number two, they'll also stop um, producing a certain cytokine called IL-2. Now, when it goes over to B cells, they're going to stop dividing too. No shocker. But you know what else they're going to do? They're going to stop making so much antibody. And again, this is going to start to sound like you're immune suppressed. And the answer is yes, but it's extremely concentration dependent. Most people are supposed to get 400 international units of vitamin D a day. People who have autoimmune diseases, a dear friend of mine, when she was going through medical school, like we were good friends when we lived back in Texas, when she went into medical school, she became completely exhausted, like more than an average medical student, like unable to function. And she was diagnosed with lupus. And so the very first thing her doctor gave her was 10,000 international units of vitamin D. 
So it's all about the concentration. So if you are trying to get a healthy level of vitamin D, between 400 international units and 2,000 international units seems to be helpful, but things like 10,000 international units are going to intentionally suppress T cells and B cells. Many doctors who treat autoimmune diseases will give their patients high levels of vitamin D because, remember, it stops the macrophage from making the MAC class 2, it stops T cells from dividing, stops them from making their core cytokine, IL-2, which allows them to divide. And then it actually, I'm going to move this up in just a second, stops um, it, it stops their ability to replicate, and then it starts apoptosis or cell death. All right. So then on the B cell, it stops them from dividing, and then it also stops antibody production. So this would be good if you had multiple sclerosis. People who have multiple sclerosis have antibodies against the myelin of their neurons. Um, so if you did have an autoimmune disease, high levels of vitamin D3 could help stop you from experiencing these terrible symptoms. However, if you're an average person, you probably want to shoot for the lower end of vitamin D. So between, you know, around 400 international units. But yeah, definitely talk with your doctor if you are concerned about your vitamin D levels. But you can see that overall, Vitamin D suppresses part of the innate immune system, but then activates these cool beta defensins, LL37, cathelicidin, and then it shuts down your B and T cells. So overall, it can stop an autoimmune disease and boost innate functions of your immune cells. I hope you found that helpful. I hope this voice recording works. I'm trying something new out. Uh, and yeah, otherwise, I hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Take care. Bye.